always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the light side of life. This session we are looking at hassles and uplifts as one of the causes of stress. Um, last lesson we looked at an introduction to stress and this builds on it thinking about what the causes are. So the first thing I want you to have a go at doing is thinking about what are stresses, what are hassles, okay? Do you think it's the smaller hassles in life that cause you more stress or do you think it's those larger stressors, the big life events, uh, getting married, losing your job, having to go for an interview, sitting A-level exams? Okay. Think about what daily hassles cause you stress. Those little things, um, the bus being slightly late, uh, them running out of your favourite pasty in the core at break time, <coughs> um, being woken up in the middle of the night by uh, a small child. Okay, Think about what hassles you've experienced today or even what hassles you've experienced this week. Okay. Do you think it's those small hassles? Do they build up? Do they add together to cause you stress? Or do you think it's those large life events that cause you more stress? Okay, that's what we're going to be thinking about in a bit more detail today. <coughs> now, there was an instrument devised by Holmes and Ray in 1967 called the SRRS, which stands for the Social Readjustment Rating Scale. Okay. And this was designed um, to show good and bad major life events that could go on to potentially increase your stress level. Um, and then they're proposing that the higher stress level you have, the more susceptible to illness and mental health problems you are. Um, we're going to look at this scale in more detail when we look at measurements of stress and a measurement using self-report. But for now, we're thinking about it today to be able to compare to hassles and uplifts. Okay, now you'll have a chance to actually have a go at completing the social readjustment rating scale, but just to show you what it looks like. Okay, you can see here, it's got various events such as death of a spouse right there at the top with 100 points as being the most stressful event. Okay, down to pregnancy, um, changes in financial states, um, new mortgage, it's obviously American, which is why it's in dollars there. I'm going all the way down to holidays and minor violations of the law. Okay, So the number next to it, the score it's given, relates to how stressful an event they feel it was. And the idea is you go down and you complete the scale okay, um, for every event that has occurred to you personally within the last 12 months. Okay, You then add up the points for each of the events that's happened to you in the last 12 months and that's going to give you an overall score. You can then have a look and see how likely they believe that makes you um, to suffer from illness and mental health problems. Okay, a low score is anything below 149, up to a major score of anything above 300. Okay, so if we go back to here now. Okay, so when I did this, for example, I scored 180 on it, and that puts me in the mild category. Okay, um, and I'm pleased to say I'm not suffering from much stress, so that's probably about right. Um, but if I'd done it for the 12 months prior to that, I would have scored 220. Okay, puts me in the moderate category, mainly um, because I was pregnant and had a baby during that time. So you can see it's going to vary, obviously, at different points in your life, depending on what life events are going on. Now, Kanna et al. in 1981, um, he developed the idea that actually he didn't think it was these major life events that were going to be the best predictor of stress. He thought it was more about what he called hassles and uplifts, okay? And he wanted to compare those to the SRRS scale to see which one is a better predictor of the psychological symptoms of stress. So what we need to think about, what are hassles? Now, a daily hassle is any minor event that arises in the course of a normal day. So we're not talking about an exam. We're not talking about um, the death of your grandma or granddad because they are not normal everyday events. We're thinking about things like... Um, the bus being late, as I said before, okay? Like somebody knocking over your glass of water, like the computer not turning on properly, okay? All those little things that are generally short-lived, okay, but they can build up, okay? They can accumulate. If you get lots and lots more hassles, if they're left unresolved, okay, then they can become more and more irritating and intensify. And overall, they may build up to cause you stress. 
In contrast to that, you have what kind of called daily uplifts. And those are positive, nice experiences um, that, can, that can cheer you up and make your day more bearable. Okay, so um, these are some examples of what can refer to as the top um, hassles and uplifts. So um, these are for everybody and they may not apply to people of your age group, um, but things like hassles, concerns about weight, health of a family member, um, physical appearance. And uplifts can include things like completing a task, feeling healthy, getting enough sleep, um, eating out, spending time with the family. Okay, and the idea he thought was that the more uplifts you had, they might counteract any hassles you have to overall lower the chances of you being stressed. So what was the actual study they did? Well, as I said, it was in 1981, and the aim was to be able to compare the hassles and uplift scale and the life event scale as predictors of psychological symptoms of stress. So which one is going to be the best predictor of stress? Okay, so who were the participants in the study? Well, they had 100 males and females, all from California, okay? Um, they were mostly white, Protestant, with adequate or above average income and at least nine grade education. So you can see there is a real issue with the sample there. It's very ethnocentric, okay? Um, it's not massively representative and therefore you may struggle to generalise from it. Um, in terms of the numbers, 216 were initially contacted, 109 agreed to take part and nine dropped out. Now, given it was a longitudinal study, that is a relatively low attrition rate, um, only nine people. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, because one of the problems of longitudinal studies can be attrition. Um, what they actually did, they sent out all tests one month before the research actually began. So they would have had one envelope with all the questionnaires they needed to complete in. What they were then asked to do, every month for nine months, they were asked to complete the hassles and uplift scale. After 10 months, they were asked to complete the life event scale because remember the life event scale asked them to think about what's happened in the preceding 12 months. So they just needed to complete that once. Every month as well for nine months, they were also asked to complete both questionnaires about their psychological symptoms of stress. Now, what they found, hassles were consistent from month to month. There was not much vary, so variance between individual, uh, sorry, within the individuals. So if they had a high score for hassles one month, they were likely to have a high score for hassles the following month as well. Um, life events for men correlated positively with hassles and negatively with uplifts. So basically, as number of life events increases, hassles also increases, but uplifts decrease. So they're having identifying more hassles, um, and the number of uplifts is decreasing. They're not having as many nice things going on. For women, the more life events they reported, the more hassles and uplifts they reported. Okay, so the number of life events increases, hassles increases, but so does uplift, so does positive events too. So that's a difference between males and females there. Um, there was also a positive correlation between hassle frequency and psychological symptoms of stress. So as you would expect, the more hassles there were, the more they showed these negative symptoms of stress. Um, and really importantly, hassles correlated positively more with psychological symptoms of stress than life events did. Okay? So it was a better predictor, a more powerful predictor of psychological symptoms and stress than life events. Now you need to be really careful here. It's a correlation and therefore we can't say it's caused. We don't know that those hassles are causing you to be more stressed. It could actually be that it's the other way around. Maybe you're feeling more stressed and therefore you identify more hassles in your everyday life. So it's very difficult to work out which way the direction is. Is it causal or not? And we don't know that without further studies. Um, something you need to think about in terms of the evaluation, um, was the sample representative? Can you generalise? Um, was it large enough? Think about the methodology. They use self-report methods. What are the issues there? It was a longitudinal study and it used a correlational method. Are there any issues with that? What about subjectivity? And this is a big problem when measuring stress. This is going to influence the validity. People will rate the same level of stress differently. Okay? I could be a certain level of stressed okay? and I think that's not too bad. Someone else could be exactly the same level of stressed as me but they think that's horrendous and rate it much, much higher. So there is a real issue of subjectivity here. You also need to think about the ethics. Is any psychological harm being caused in doing this? <coughs> and also, when thinking about reductionist versus... Always look on the bright side of life.
always look on the light.